juniors. Oh, I can't believe that this is the last day of Washington Conference camp meeting. Boy, the weather has been wild, huh, Pastor Kai Kai? Yes, ups and downs. Snow, lightning, wind, fire, oh. rain. It's been wild. I can't, I don't even know what to expect today. I guess we're going to have to wait and see what meteorologist Caleb. Yeah, Caleb Cloud has in store Interesting, for his us. last name, huh? Yeah, Cloud. mysterious. wonder if that's his real name or not. What yeah. do you think, boys and girls? Do you think that's his real name? I guess we'll have to wait and see if he reveals himself to them one day. But today we have a special program and a few more videos of one final message from Pastor Edder. And at the end of it all, we're going to come back and share just a little message with you guys. So thank you so much for being with us the whole week. This is our final day, this Sabbath. And after this service, we're going to jump back on and say one last message. All right, so what else do we do at camp meeting in juniors? We do Bible studies. Bible study. We each have our Bible. And part of the Bible study is remembering what? Uh, verses, like uh, verses for memorization. Ooh, do you guys know Ephesians 1, 4, and 5? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's hear it. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to him through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted and it gave him great pleasure. Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. Man, that's awesome, guys. All right, any other Bible verses come to mind? Mm -hmm. John eleven thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. 35. John, all right, what is it then? Jesus what? Jesus what? Ah, uh, all right. Junior class, we're challenging you to read chapter 11 of John. It's about Jesus wept, mm -hmm. but it ends with an exciting resurrection of his friend. Do you remember his name? Nehemiah. No. Lazarus. Lazarus. Yeah. You stop joking around. <laughs> All right. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the juniors. And thank you so much for Levi and for David and all our juniors online watching. And Lord, thank you for the story in John 11 of you resurrecting Lazarus. And Lord, I pray that each one of us will read it and remind us that, Lord, you are the resurrection and the life. We love you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Take care, juniors. Toodaloo. Hey everyone, welcome back to A Minute Outdoors. I'm John Henry. Today I want to introduce you to a beautiful wildflower. Meet the trout lily. This flower is such an exquisite flower to find and it's only out for a short period of time in the spring. It's called a trout lily because of the leaves, how they look kind of like the sides of a trout. And you'll notice the beautiful bell flower as it hangs there. It's only out for a little bit and it's such a treat to be able to see it. But I want you to notice that there's two leaves underneath this, uh, underneath this flower. The trout lily only lives for a couple years. And the first year, it has one leaf, takes in the energy, stores it in the root system, and then the second year, it's able to produce two leaves and a beautiful flower. Right now, you might be feeling like you're living a one-leaf life. But don't worry, God's got something great stored up for you. Just like the trout lily, you just have to be patient. Thanks for joining me for A Minute Outdoors. We'll see you later. Hey, it's me again, John Henry. I'm so glad you could join us for camp meeting, and I hope that you learned a lot about God's creation. I know that by learning more about the nature that God has made for us, I was able to see evidence that God really was here with us all along. I hope the next time we see each other, we're out exploring for more animals. But remember, you can't learn any more about God's nature unless you get out there and start exploring. Speaking of exploring, 
I'm gonna go out and try to find more of these noisy cicadas. We'll see you next time. Well, juniors, meteorologist Caleb Cloud with you again to talk about the storm finally beginning to head its way off to the east. It's working its way over Idaho, heading into Montana, and eventually will work its way farther east across the rest of the United States, which will mean for us things are going to start to quiet down here across the state of Washington. And what we see as the storm starts to depart is a uh, beautiful phenomenon that happens with the interaction of some water droplets and the sunshine. You get what this thing, what we call a rainbow that starts to show up in the sky and it's just absolutely gorgeous and a spectacular sight. And there's a backstory to this thing right here called a rainbow. We learned about that in Genesis 9:16. It reads, the rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And that promise is because, of course, God, he had to destroy the earth with a flood, a global flood. But once Noah and his family got off and all the animals, he showed this sign of a rainbow up into the sky to let everyone know that this is not going to happen again. I give you my promise. I give you my word. And we know whenever God gives his word, he is definitely going to keep it. So we want to hold on to those promises, not only just to that one, but to every last one of them that is inside of the Bible and in his word, because we know that he is faithful and just to keep his word. And eventually we get to the end of time and he has promised that he will come back and he will save us from this planet and he will take us back with him to live an eternity with him where he will reign forever. We learn about that in Revelation 4, 3, and it reads, and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in the appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in the appearance like an emerald. And of course, there on the throne is God. And he is there with his, his glory, his majesty, and his power, and this beautiful rainbow that is around him. And we know that from that promise, of course, that he will never destroy the earth with a complete global flood again. But we also know, too, that he is faithful and just and that he's going to be coming back for us. And what we need to do is be ready for his return. Of course, uh, spend the time that we need with him in studying the Bible. Spend the time that we need with him in just in prayer and in uh, all every other facets of life with helping others and with also trying to make sure that we, of course, beautiful part of the country that we have here in his nature and, of course, beginning to uh, enjoy the wildlife that we have around here. Of course, don't want to get too close to that, though. But keep that in mind. Definitely, you're going to want to uh, keep that in your prayers, too, as we go throughout the next few days and as we go throughout uh, the next year or so or however long we have on this earth. So continue to walk with Jesus and make sure that you're walking forward with him in your life day after day.
Hi, Juniors. Edder here. Um, this is my son, Jonathan. Jonathan, you want to say hello to the Juniors? Hi. One of the things that I really like doing is playing with Jonathan. Um, you know, growing up, my dad worked a lot. And one of the things that I would say as a kid was the day that I grew up, the day when I become a father, I want to play and I want to have fun with my kids. So that's something that I do. Uh, we play video games, we go bike riding, we play basketball, we, we train soccer together. Um, there's so many different things that I enjoy to do. But some of the things Jonathan's like to do is he likes to come up and create his own games. And well, this is one of his creations. So Jonathan, can you tell us what game you have created? Marble Ball. Marble bowling. Okay. Well, can you tell our junior friends what marble bowling is? Well, you you're gonna get some of these balls, which is big, and you'll find them at Walmart or okay. Target. Okay. And you created like a triangle. Yep. So how many balls in total are there here? Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Very good. So ten balls set up, and then what else? You're gonna need marbles, which you're gonna find at Dollar Tree. So we got these marbles here, if you can see. Okay. And well, first you get, if once you pick a color, you can't just pick white and orange. You have to stick with the color that you want. Is that why you're giving me two orange marbles? Yes, and I stick with white. So if you get more, more out of these than the other player, you would deserve this. Okay, so what you're saying is that we're going to roll. We're each going to roll one. And if we knock out the balls from the area, those are our points. Yeah. And whoever gets more points gets the big ball. Okay. So you can't just go like this and I have two balls. It wouldn't be fair for the other player. So you have to take out one of your balls and you'll have the same amount. Of so the players. player then gets the advantage with the biggest marble. Yes. Okay. All right. So why don't we do this? Why don't we play a couple of games so that way our junior friends can understand how we play um, marble bowling? Sounds good? Yeah. Okay. Okay, juniors, we're back. So as you can see, there's our setup. There's our 10 uh, soft balls. And prior to uh, hitting record, we selected who gets to go first, and Jonathan will be going first. Now, here's the thing. Um, what we do is also what we create a line here. Now, you can't see it from all the way over there. Um, but if we cross that line, then we lose our turn. All right, so here we go. Jonathan, are you ready? Yeah. All right. Here's Jonathan. Oh, so close, Jonathan. So, oh, okay, so that's something that you gotta figure out is how you roll. Um, it's not as easy as it looks. You would think, oh, you know, you're close. It's it's one of those things where um, it doesn't always work that way. So Jonathan, all right, gotta figure out kind of how to roll it. Oh, there's two. Uh, so all right, so Jonathan, he hit two balls. So now I have to either match him or um, hopefully beat him. But again, as you saw, it's not as easy as it looks. So Jonathan gets to reset the marbles, uh, the blue balls in the back. All right? All right, Jonathan. So I, I have to hit two. Oh, so I miss. Oh, I completely missed. Now because I missed, now Jonathan gets the advantage. Now he gets the bigger ball. So Jonathan, go ahead and roll again. And uh, well, there you go. There you have it. Jonathan figure it out. He wins that round and he wins the match. So again, um, it's one of those things that you kind of got to figure it out. But again, juniors, uh, you know, through all this, Jonathan and I really like to have fun and um, he's very competitive. I'm very competitive, but more, more importantly, we enjoy each other's company. We enjoy having uh, this time. So hopefully maybe you can find time and your parents can play with you this game or any other game that you feel that you enjoy. So again, juniors, thank you for joining us and hopefully you get to enjoy a little bit of bowl marbling. Jonathan, thank you for playing with me. Hey juniors, welcome back. Well, as you saw, I really enjoyed playing with my son there, Jonathan. And Jonathan is just a goofball full of energy such a wonderful young kid and he's such a blessing and I couldn't ask for anything of who he is. I was truly blessed as a father and God gave Jonathan to me and his mother as a wonderful gift, which reminds me of a story in the Bible. 
once there was a, a guy named Abraham. He had a wife named Sarah. And they didn't think they could have any kids, which was a major disappointment because they really wanted a family. But little did Abraham know that God had had a very special plan for him and Sarah. When Abraham was 75 years old, God promised to give him kids. And one day, God would send a rescuer to his family. God only asked of him and Sarah would leave their home first and follow him. Now, they had a tough choice to make. Leave all their friends and trust God or stay comfortable. This was not easy. You see, Abraham really wanted children, but was already pretty old. And Sarah was getting up there too. Not to mention, she's never been able to get pregnant. So Abraham and Sarah were going to leave their home and trust God. They had to believe that God, that God was going to do something impossible. The good news is that, is they decided to trust God and that God would keep his promise. That's always the right choice. So Abraham and Sarah moved from their home to a land named Canaan. Right away, God reminded Abraham of his promise. And he said, I will make your children like the dust in the earth. Can the dust be counted? Can the dust of, of earth be counted? If they can, then your children can be counted. This was God's funny way of telling Abraham he would have a lot of kids because no one, not everyone could count this piece of dust. Well, one, his promise seemed great, but after a while, Abraham and Sarah still had no kids, let alone uh, as a piece of dust. Now, they were really old. Sometimes, sometimes God reminds us of his promise, but more importantly, he wants us to trust him. So one time, God took Abraham outside and told him to look at the stars, and he reminded Abraham that he would give him that many kids. So Abraham decided to keep believing in God. Him and Sarah waited again after more years. Uh, this time he got impatient and God told Abraham, by next year, Sarah will have a son. But by now, Abraham was 99 years old. He and Sarah had given up on having kids in God's promise. In fact, when Abraham told Sarah about his promise, Sarah started to laugh. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not a good idea to laugh at God's promise, but Sarah was tired of waiting and she stopped trusting. The great thing is that even we think it's impossible, God really does keep his promises. And just as God promised, Sarah got pregnant the next year after Abraham 100th birthday. When their son was born, they named him Isaac, which means laughter. Sarah said, God has given laughter to me. Everyone who hears about my story will laugh with me. And think about it. A really old lady having a baby, that's pretty funny. <laughs> God kept his promise. And Sarah and Abraham, and they gave him a son. Even though they didn't think it was possible, it was easy for God because he could do anything, including giving old people babies. And that's the wonderful thing. God will keep his promises. But here's the thing, juniors. We got to keep moving forward. We keep got to trust God and believe in God's promises. Well, a little bit while later, when Isaac, Isaac was a young kid, God tested Abraham by telling him, by telling uh, to take him to Mount Moriah and kill him as a sacrifice to God. Abraham was confused, but still he trusted God. That's always a good thing, to trust God. It's important to us to continue to trust God through everything because God would see our faith. So Abraham carried the wood and the knife and they took the torch and together they climbed the mountain. And where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Asked Isaac. God will provide, says Abraham. So they arranged the wood and the altar and Abraham tied the tied him up and laid him on the wood. And as he raised his knife to kill Isaac, an angel called his name and said, Abraham, don't hurt the boy. 
the angel cried. God knows you trust in his promises. Look, in their bushes, a ram is caught is by his horns. Sacrifice that instead. So Abraham sacrificed the ram instead, uh, instead of his son. And he called the place God will provide because God provided the sacrifice. Just as God has said his promise came true. I can't imagine everything Abraham was going through that day as, as he took his son, you know, it took him so many years to conceive and now he had to sacrifice him. But Abraham moved forward. Even Isaac moved forward and they wanted to do God's will. It's not always easy to follow through with God's will, but God always has a special plan and he has so many wonderful promises. Juniors, we gotta continue to move forward and believe that God has a special plan for each one of us. We just need to move forward. So with that being said, I would like to pray. Dear Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for everything that you do. Be with the juniors. Bless them and their plans and in their futures as they move forward. In your name we pray, amen. All right, juniors, thank you, and I'll see you again soon. Let's continue to move forward. Hey, juniors, how was the program? Did you like it? I'm really inspired and touched by the message that Pastor Eddie shares with us. Remember the rainbow? God's promise to all of us that he has a future. Where can we move on forward with him? Yeah. Our week has been pretty wild. Mm -hmm. Crazy weather. We haven't been able to be in the same place like we normally are. Right. And that kind of represents our year that we've had. And True, yeah. It's been a very difficult 2020, 2021. Maybe you've lost someone that you love. Maybe mm. someone has been very sick or you haven't been able to see someone for a very long time. We know on behalf of the pastors, Pastor John, Pastor Jesse, uh, and the two of us that we really miss you guys. And we sure. hope that we could see you sometime throughout the Washington Conference, maybe in the summer, maybe later this fall, and hopefully in the future again, we could gather and have lots of fun activities together. Although it's been kind of silly at times, teaching you about different words and, and just <laughs> being here on campus, just with the two of us playing and having fun. There's an important message that we want to leave with you guys. We know that every day when we gather, when we normally are here, Pastor John encourages us to pray for each other and pray for you. We want you to know that we're praying for you, that we love you, that we care about you. And we hope that you will remember us and remember that God loves you. Pastor Kai Kai wants to leave a very special message just for you before we come to an end. Just before we close, I want to thank you, each one of you, for tuning in to our everyday programs. I'm pretty sure at least your heart is touched by the message that, that has been shared with you. The team for our camp meeting this year is moving forward. Earlier, Pastor Willie mentioned how our year has been going. We, were, we weren't moving as much. But with God's promise, we can continue to move on. Remember His promise that you and I have a future for, for prosperity, for happiness, for joy, and beyond the COVID and all the social distancing that we all had to face. There is Jesus always near us through his promises and his word. So if you are touched by God's love and care through the message, through the song, through the weather, the crazy weather forecast, and through the nature nuggets, God is for sure not leaving us nor forsaking us. He is there to hold on to us. So if you want to extend your hand and say, Jesus, please fulfill your promise unto me. Would you please 
show me a thumbs up. Would you please show me a heart like this? Yes, thank you. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, as we extend this heart, Father, it's a representation of our heart that we give it to you. Because you promise us that great things will happen. And you promise us that with you, we can move forward. Please restore our health, the joy that we once lost. And Father, help us to be with you in your heavenly kingdom. Thank you so much for all the message that we learned throughout this camp meeting. Thank you so much for Pastor Eddie and all the pastors that has helped to our weatherman and our nature nugget person as well. And we want to thank you for our friends and families that love and cares and support us. And Father, remember that we want to give our hearts to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, juniors, we enjoyed having a week together virtually, but we really miss mm -hmm. you. It's not the same being close to you and seeing you and laughing and trying to chase you. So we look forward to seeing you again. I hope that some of you will be at Sunset Lake Camp yeah. or some of you will be in Pathfinders coming up and maybe the Fall Camporee or any of the other activities in the Washington Conference. If you see us, make sure to say hi. God loves you and we love you. Have a great rest of the summer and remember to continue moving forward. See you guys. All right, see you all.